monkeys exist. Give it a try. If your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, and it is, yes or no, and you stop thinking the same way, and nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together, every place where one neuron connects with another neuron is called a memory. So as you begin to unfire and unwire, you prune the very circuits in your brain that are connected to the old self. And the memory of the old self begins to mutate, begins to change. So then you would say, where is that memory stored? And it's stored in the soul now as wisdom because you're no longer that person, yes or no? And if you could no longer behave the same way and nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together, and pruning is part of biology, you don't use it, you lose it, then your memory of the old self would begin to change. And that is a biological death in the beginning that is uncomfortable for a lot of people. If you're no longer feeling the same emotions that keep you connected to the past and you keep inhibiting that process, the body will be craving the chemicals in the beginning because it's been conditioned that way. It's been, it's been addicted. It's the mind. And it's anticipating events and the emotions from those events and you're putting the brakes on. And that's uncomfortable. And you got to stay conscious and it takes an enormous amount of energy. And you're no longer signaling the same genes and producing the same hormones. And your body is no longer being influenced by your mind in the same way. And sometimes the mind is the biggest enemy to the body. And you're inhibiting that process. And the body, which has become the mind, wants its way. And it's uncomfortable to change. And you've got to be able to be greater than that to truly change. And everybody that's changed has come up against that feeling. And they almost make the same choice and they don't. And they're so glad that they didn't. And it takes an enormous amount of energy and awareness to do that. So as the old self deconstructs because you have the free will to decide who you want to be on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And if your life isn't changing and you want to change your life, you got to change. And now you are playing the game and you are now saying this personality, this person that I've become, I'm in the habit of being it and I want to become somebody else. And the more you learn about love, the more you learn about life, the more you learn about possibility and potential. The more you become aware of it, there are more possibilities, and knowledge is the thing that gives us that. And so the old self is a memory like another lifetime. Like, you can remember it, but you're no longer interested in it any longer because it no longer defines you. How many people understand what I'm talking about? So then the biological death of the old self is crossing a river of change, and you got to stay with it long enough to become somebody else. And you think it's about wealth, it's, you think it's about health, it's about who you become. <laughs> the people who become somebody else, they, they see dramatic changes in their health and in their lives. And, and they can't find the words to be able to explain it. But it's practical though. If you truly want to change your life, you have to change yourself. You would have to be conscious of your thoughts and aware of your actions and, and familiar with those emotions. And you would never fall from grace. And if you did, you would stop and self-correct. If you truly were interested in evolution, and if you said to me, it's, I, can't, I lost it because of that person, I'd say to you, you're back to the unconscious program of allowing your environment to control how you feel and think. You got two choices. Stay there for another six hours, or pause and change your energy. <laughs> change your energy and get back to the emotions of your future and the feelings of your future. It's a much better place to be. Reason this with me. You could have a great meditation and condition your body just like you did into the future. You come back to your senses and you return back to the same old self, romance in the past again. You're going to weigh that one 50 minute, one hour meditation against the rest of the day back to you. You got to start practicing. We have to start doing it with our eyes open and the thought of who we want to become should produce the feeling of it instantaneously. In other words, the thought of your future should produce the feeling that it already happened instead of the feeling of lack because it hasn't happened. How many people understand that? And the people who do this well, they condition their body into the future. And they say, I don't know how it happened. It's like I, my body was led right to the event. 
and your body's going to follow your mind to an unknown just like it follows your mind to the toilet every morning. But instead of it being the known, it's going to be the unknown. That's where your attention and your energy is spent. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you believe in, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, what you eat, I don't care, it doesn't matter. I've seen it in all ways. So then, the thought of our future, if we're doing this properly, should produce the feeling that it already happened. If the thought of your future produces the lack that it hasn't happened, you're still in your past, and nothing is going to change. And it would make sense then that you would want to get that heart open on a regular basis so that you can feel the emotions of your future before it happens. I'm telling you, there's a lot of biology that changes in you. And you do it enough times, you, you become that person. The thought of it then produces the feeling that it's already happened. That's how you know you're getting close, independent of what's going on in your life. That's when you're mastering yourself and mastering your life. I have sat